August 4th, 2022. Today I woke up to the news that an old childhood friend of mine had suddenly passed away. I can't believe it. We were so close when we were younger and I feel like a part of my life is now missing. I feel so helpless, like I can't do anything to bring him back. I feel so sad and it feels like my heart is heavy. I can't help but think of all the fun times we had together growing up, all of our adventures, our secrets, and even our arguments. I miss him so much and I can't believe he's gone. I'm struggling to cope with this news and it's hard to stay focused on anything else. I hope that writing this journal will help me to process my emotions and to come to terms with what has happened. I know that my friend would want me to remember the good times and continue to live my life to the fullest. I attended the funeral of my childhood friend and I was overwhelmed with grief. As I looked around at everybody else in the room, I could feel the sadness in the air. The service was beautiful and the pastor said some kind words about my friend that made me feel better. After the service, I went back to my friend's parents' house and spent some time with them. I was reminded of all the fun times we had growing up. I never imagined that I would be saying goodbye to my friend so soon. As I sat with my friend's parents, we reminisced about all the memories we shared. At the end of the visit, his parents gave me some old personal items that belonged to my friend. I was surprised to find an old stack of discs containing some Doom file backups. It was an emotional moment, but I am grateful to have these items to remember my friend by. When I get home, I'll go through some of his old artwork and see what I can recover from the discs. I spent some time looking through my friend's sketchbook just in case there was something important in there. I had no idea what to expect, but I definitely was not prepared for the strange artwork that I found inside. The sketches were mostly abstract and dark, with a lot of imagery depicting death, sadness, and despair. As I flipped through the pages, the artwork seemed to get increasingly darker, and I began to feel a sense of dread. I decided that I had seen enough and closed the book, feeling a little bit shaken. After that, I decided to take my mind off things and did some Amazon shopping. I need a USB 3.5 floppy drive if I'm going to try to recover some of these old files. Lord knows whether anything can actually be retrieved from these discs. They're nearly 20 years old. Fingers crossed. My package finally arrived in the mail, so I spent the day going through old floppy disks. I plugged it in and started to play around with it. I was surprised to find that I could actually recover data from the old floppy disks. I had some old files from my high school days that I thought were long gone, but here they were. My friend and I used to make Doom maps in high school, and I was so excited to find them again. But then, I stumbled across a map that I had never seen before. It was a map of my friend's house. I was so surprised to learn that he had been working on this map in secret. Playing this map made me realize the best way to honor our friendship is to clean up his work and release it to the public. We never made any of our Doom stuff available to others. I guess we were young and intimidated by the great work produced by the community. But I'm impressed with the quality of what's currently here in this map, and I think it's a fitting tribute to clean it up for others to enjoy. I spent this morning doing something I haven't done in years. Browse Doom World for the most recent Doom editing tools. I was amazed to find out how easy and accessible the new tools were compared to what I was used to back in the mid-2000s. I ended up downloading Ultimate Doom Builder and Slade, both of which proved to be incredibly useful. Ultimate Doom Builder made mapping incredibly easy and straightforward. I was able to quickly create a basic map without much trouble, and I'm excited to see what I can achieve with it with a bit more practice. Slade was also much better at managing resources than trying to use Wintex, which I remember using back in the day. I feel pretty comfortable now that I can finish my friend's map and maybe add some new features to spruce it up as well. I had the strangest dream last night about my childhood friend who recently passed away. We were playing with Legos in his basement like we used to do as kids, and when I turned around, he was gone. The house was completely empty and silent. Everything was so quiet and still. I started to smell smoke and hear screams from upstairs. I ran upstairs, and when I got there, the house was just a burned frame. Smoke was getting thicker and thicker, and I could barely see or breathe. I searched for my friend, but I couldn't find him anywhere. I couldn't see anything. I started to panic and then found myself outside in the fog. I was alone, but I could hear low growls in the distance. When I woke up, I wished so badly that it was all just a dream, but I knew deep down that it was real. I just missed my friend so much. It's hard to think that he's gone. There's nothing worse than letting your mind dwell on something. After a while, it starts to consume you. Just now, I decided to order a replacement set of smoke detectors with CO2 sensors. Just in case. Today, I made a post on Doom World showing off my friend's map. There's more to do on the map, but hopefully this is the encouragement I needed to finish the map and push it out for the release. I thought it would be a simple project, but the more I learn about the new UDMF features, the more things I've been adding to make it more interesting. I want the project to maintain the original aesthetic that my friend was working on, but I'm trying to find that fine line between the original vanilla map and a cleaned up release that feels a little less 90s. October already? I've been super busy with work, so I haven't had a lot of time to work on the map. I did, however, go back and look through the sketchbook again, and started scamming some of them into the computer for prosperity. As I scrolled through the drawings, I could see that my friend had taken a dark turn. Each sketch is more unhinged and disturbing than the last. 
I felt the chill of worry run down my spine as I realized that my friend's mental health might have been in a very fragile state. Today was a very long day at work, but I was really looking forward to coming home and getting some mapping in. I decided to order a pizza first, so I called my favorite pizza place and placed my order. It felt so good to be able to relax and enjoy some good food. Once the pizza arrived, I set it aside and got to work on my Doom map. I've been working on it for a while now, and I've been making some good progress. I'm determined to make my friend proud. I spent the next few hours tweaking and refining this map, and it felt really good to mess with some of the new UDMF features. It's fun to assign floors without having to draw new textures. Eventually, after a few hours, I decided to take a break and have some of that pizza I ordered earlier. After dinner, I went back to work on my map, making some more tweaks and finishing up some of the details. I can't wait to release it. I think people are really going to love the Doom Q elements in the map. I know sharing is a big part of the Doom community, but a small part of me doesn't want people to make modifications to this map. Mostly because I feel like this is a tribute and just a vessel for my feelings and emotions. Someone else making changes would feel inappropriate. But most importantly, I feel like something wants me to be the only one to work on it. I can't explain it, but when I reached out to the Z Doom Discord members for help, it seemed like something didn't want me to upload it for others to work on. It sounds stupid because I ended up uploading a copy, but for a moment I felt compelled to keep it for myself. Fortunately my post on Doom World was received well, and it seems that most people aren't bothered by the idea that an author doesn't want to make their map available for modifications. I had an incredibly vivid dream last night. This has been happening for several weeks now, I feel like I should start documenting them. I'll do my best to recall the events of my dream. I awoke in a cold sweat, my heart pounding in my ears. I felt a chill run down my spine and I knew something was wrong. I lay in bed, too afraid to move, when I hear a faint ghostly cry coming from the attic. I had heard the sound before, but this time it was louder and more insistent. I tried to ignore it, telling myself it was just my imagination, but the more I tried to push it away, the louder it became. I had no choice but to investigate. I got out of my bed and slowly crept up the stairs to the attic, my heart pounding so hard I thought it would burst. As I entered the attic, I noticed a trail of children's toys leading out the window. I followed the trail, feeling a strange compulsion to do so. The trail led me to an abandoned daycare center near the edge of town. I stayed back, afraid to enter, but I couldn't help but feel drawn to the place. I knew something was waiting for me inside, something dark and dangerous. I took a deep breath and stepped inside. The place was dark and silent, but as I walked around I noticed that the walls were covered in eerie drawings of children and babies. Then I heard the sound of a baby crying again, coming from the back of the room. I followed the sound and when I reached the back of the room I saw a crib with a stillborn baby inside. I felt the chill run down my spine and I realized what was haunting me. The stillborn baby was the one in the attic. I backed away slowly, my heart pounding in my ears. I knew I had to leave this place and I quickly ran out the door, never looking back. It's been a long day and I'm exhausted. I had every intention of getting some rest earlier, but here I am, still wide awake and struggling to keep my eyes open. I can't help but feel like I'm forgetting something, but I can't put my finger on it. I had so much planned for today, or did I? I'm trying to remember what I did yesterday, but it's all a blur. Was I working on a Doom map? I feel like I must have been. I, I can't remember adding any new geometry or details, and all the scripts seems completely foreign to me. I don't remember writing them. I'm so frustrated, and I'm starting to get really worried that maybe this insomnia is making me crazy. It's late now, and I'm determined to get some proper sleep tonight. Hopefully I can make sense of this all in the morning. I was actually able to get some sleep last night. However, I continue to have these vivid, cryptic dreams and they keep feeling more personal and unsettling. I'm starting to prefer the tiresome days to my dreams. I was dreaming about taking a nice hot bath. I felt myself sinking deeper and deeper into the warm water until I couldn't breathe. I tried to scream, but no sound escaped my lips. I was drowning in my own bathtub. Suddenly I felt the jolt as if I had been pulled out of the water, and when I opened my eyes I found myself in a subterranean cave, illuminated by the faint eerie blue light. I could feel a chill in the air, and I could hear the echoing of demons in the distance. I tried to scream, but my voice was muffled by the darkness of the cave. I felt the chill run down my spine as I realized I was being hunted by something unseen. I heard the scraping of claws on the rocks, and I felt the ground shake beneath me. I was terrified and started to run. I ran and ran until I found a small crevice in the wall of the cave. I squeezed through and hid in the darkness, hoping the demon wouldn't find me. Eventually, I awoke in my bed, safe and sound. But... I couldn't help but feel a lingering fear that the demons were still out there, watching and waiting. It's 4.30am and I'm still working on this map for Doom. I can't believe I've been up this late. I must be exhausted. I'm not sure why, but I've been having trouble sleeping lately. I just can't seem to shut my mind off. I'm really starting to feel the effects of it too. 
I've been more irritable than usual, and my coworkers have said they've noticed a change in my behavior. I'm also a lot more on edge and jumpy than I used to be. I'm playing back the map to check my work, and I'm finding all these new additions I don't remember adding. It's almost like the map has a mind of its own, but that's impossible, right? Maybe I'm just exhausted and not thinking straight. I guess I should take it as a sign that I need to get some rest. Today I decided to take a day off of work. I was just so tired and I couldn't focus anymore. I've been having trouble sleeping for weeks now and I just needed to rest. I'm glad Christmas is coming soon so I can spend a little time with my family. I'm looking forward to it even if I don't really feel like being around people. It'll be nice to have some time away from the school and to just relax. I'm sure there'll be a lot of fun and there will be plenty of laughter and good times. Here's hoping I'll be well rested and ready to face the world again soon. Don't attempt to type while sleepy. I was in the bathroom, standing in front of the mirror, shaving. As I looked at my reflection, I noticed it winked at me. It was so strange and unexpected that I threw my razor at the mirror. I was so scared that I expected the mirror to shatter, but instead it stayed intact. I was even more surprised when I put my hand through the mirror and I could feel the glass. I kept going and I was able to climb all the way into the mirror. It was like a tunnel. When I looked back, I saw myself in the mirror, and this time I winked back. It was so surreal, but I felt like I belonged there. It was like my home. I woke up feeling so confused and shocked, I still can't believe it was just a dream. Today was supposed to be my first day back at work after the holiday break, but I decided to take one more day off to work on myhouse.wad. I've been spending hours every day mapping and organizing the project, but I'm starting to feel like it's taking on a life of its own. Despite being able to remember making many of the changes, I keep finding new things appearing in the project. I'm starting to feel a little paranoid, like someone or something is watching me and is controlling the direction of the project. It's a strange feeling, and I'm not sure how to explain it, but I just feel like I'm not in control anymore. It's a little unnerving, but I'm determined to finish this project. I was driving home along a road in the woods when all of a sudden my car veered off the road and crashed into a tree. I woke up to find myself in the driver's seat with an injured and bleeding leg. My head was spinning and I felt disoriented. I dragged myself out of the car and hobbled my way through the woods in hopes of finding help. My leg was in agony and I felt like I was going to faint. Through the trees I saw lights from a lonely gas station. I was relieved to find it open, but then I realized there was nobody there. I had no idea where everybody had gone. As I was standing there, I heard some strange noises coming from the woods around me. I was too scared to investigate, so I just stood there, feeling scared and alone. Suddenly, I heard a car in the distance and I limped towards it. Thank goodness, it was a taxi driver who was able to take me to the hospital. I eventually woke up in a cold sweat, not sure if I was relieved or disappointed that it was just a dream. I have an extended weekend because of MLK Day, so I thought I'd try to wrap this thing up before March. I had trouble opening the map. Doom Builder and Slade both reported being unable to locate the file. Apparently, during the previous editing session, I compiled the map as a PK3 file and both editors were looking for a previous copy in a .wad format. I had been reading tutorials on how to convert .wad files to .pk3, and I must have thrown everything into a new file at some point in an exhausted stupor because I don't remember actually converting the project into a different format. Last night I had a nightmare that felt so real I still can feel the fear and terror coursing through me as I write this. I was on an airplane. I was the only passenger. I looked out the window to see the ground below me and I noticed that the terrain was unfamiliar. I had no idea where I was or where I was going. Suddenly the plane started to shake violently and I heard a loud noise coming from the engine. In the distance I could see a huge storm cloud coming towards me. I tried to communicate with the pilot but I couldn't hear him over the sound of the engine. The plane began to dive and I suddenly felt a huge jolt. I looked out the window again and saw that the plane was heading towards some kind of structure. I closed my eyes and felt the plane crash. I felt the impact and heard the screams and cries of the people around me. I then woke up, my heart pounding and my body drenched in sweat. I don't know if it's the memories of my friend that keep flooding back while I work on this map, but I need to take a break. This project, which began as a simple cleanup and release as a memorial, has consumed all of my free time. Hours pass and I'm not aware of the time or familiar with the work added to the map. I'm going to stop mapping for a while and then come back later when I'm in a better place. I mapped again last night. And tonight. I'll take a break for real this time. I hope it will let me. Happy Valentine's Day to the only person I ever loved. For a short time, you brought a little happiness to this painful existence called life. I hope we can be together again one day. In the meantime, I'll keep looking for that other someone who can be the ray of light in my life that you turned out to be. I didn't make this area of the map. I'm sure of it. It's still the house that Thomas started all those years ago, but different. It has changed. The map I've been detailing and cleaning up for release is still here, but it's now intertwined with too many tags and sector references to separate it from these new areas. I would be more disturbed if it wasn't so beautiful. 
I took more time off work to finish the map. After 13 years, I've got the hours, but more important, the map needs me. Without my guiding hand, the map doesn't know what to build, but I can help it, guide it. It seems to respond to my designs, changing them to match my emotional state. It knows what I'm feeling. It knows how Thomas felt. I can no longer tell what elements of the maps are my friends, which are mine, and what the map has created itself. I am no longer afraid that the map is creating itself. It needs me as much as I need it. Which reminds me of a dream I had the other night. I'm not sleeping much, but I recall this one with surprising clarity. I was standing alone on a beach, staring out at the placid water, the ocean stretching out as far as the eye could see, seagulls cawed overhead, and the gentle caresses of the water lapped at the sand in front of me. I dipped my toes into the water, at least, I tried. There was no water. No ocean. It was an illusion. I realized everything around me was fake. The trees, the birds, the sand. It was all a one-act play, and I was Willie Loman. A damned fool who believed in something greater. But there was no happiness to be found. I wandered the set only to find myself staring into oblivion. It was the end of time itself. No joy, no misery, no sadness. Only emptiness. Men of faith tell us the afterlife is for eternity. But is it possible to keep your sanity for eternity? A day passes in the void. A month? A year? Two? Five? Ten? Is this an eternity? Twenty years? A hundred years? A thousand years? I've sat in this room for a million years now, entertaining the same thoughts, pondering the same questions, all ruminating on every mistake in my life, anguishing over them for centuries. A billion years now. Double that. Now double it again. I'm still nowhere close to the end of eternity. I pray for death, but it never comes. Just me, and my thoughts, and my mistakes, and my insecurities, and my regrets, and my loneliness. Somewhere, in another dream, the version of myself that winked back is now sitting on a real beach, happy and content, knowing that life is finite. There is no afterlife, and happiness is found in the small things around us that we can control. Happiness has to be fought for. I was wrong. The map is using me. This morning, I loaded a Doom Builder backup file from late October and spent a few hours preparing the map for release. I tried to delete myhouse.pk3, but I kept getting a file in use error. I don't think the map will let me. I'm going to post it on Doom World tonight, but I don't want anyone playing anything other than the original vanilla release. Whatever this map is doing to me, I can't let it do it to others. I swear I uploaded the save copy, but myhouse.pk3 was uploaded by mistake. I don't know if a lot of people were able to download the map before I fixed the link, but hopefully I caught it in time.